What's up guys, it's Mike here from The Art of Guitar. Today I'm gonna to show you such a microscopic detail. Well, it seems like it when you first hear it, but as soon as you realize you're doing it, it's gonna seem like a big deal and you're gonna to start to, I don't know, I had a little bit of a breakdown when I realized I was doing it. I'm like, how could I not have noticed I was doing this before? And then that really tightened up the screws and then my playing got way better. Okay, so instead of just telling you what it is, I wanna see if you can tell what I'm doing and uh, see what the difference is. Okay, I'm gonna use a song that's vaguely fami familiar, but uh, see what you see what you think. Here's the first example. Okay, so. Some of you guys may have caught the problem. Others of you may have just been like, sounded fine to me. Okay, now I'm gonna do it without the problem. Here we go. The first example, when I went from E to A sus, see if you could tell what's going on. That time I made it a little bit more uh, obvious. Right before I went to A sus, I hit a bunch of open strings. And then when I went from E to B, there was a couple of clicks going on. Now that's not the end of the world. As you could tell from the first example, it still sounded fine, right? When you do it full speed, But I saw one guy teaching it and you could hear some weird stuff going on in the in between those chords that weren't in the real song. So it was something like, uh, something like that, just some noise going on, stuff that doesn't need to be there. And so I started to realize way back in the day that I had a bunch of static between my chords. It was either open strings or it was just muted strings. But either way, it was kind of ruining my uh, smooth transitions from chord to chord. That's when I realized how microscopic you really have to get sometimes when you practice. So just doing a simple thing, as you went to strum, you instantly switched. That's harder than you think at full speed. And I'll show you a technique on how to really develop this. But now listen, I'll do the first example again. Second example. Hear that subtle difference? It's a little bit more professional sounding the second way. All right, how do you get your fingers to instantly morph to the next chord? Well, there's a couple things you could do. The first thing, which I did a lot of, was I found alternate ways of doing my fingering so that it was a little more smooth. So in this case, I'd go E to A sus by dropping my pinky down and just lifting up my other fingers. That way there's a little bit more of a connection point. And on the website, we do a whole thing on how to connect chords in really cool ways so that you never really have this problem. But if you don't wanna modify the way you play chords, I don't blame you, but it is kinda of cool to go from here to here with no lag time because you're basically using the same fingers as the previous chord. And when you go to B from E, it's really easy too because you could just drop your pinky down, lift these up and slide, and you could do this in a really controlled way. But I would recommend you're able to do it even with the full chords, the way you play them now without morphing them, you should still be able to do this. I'll do a little bit of how to do it methodically and then you could jump to the site to really uh, practice it with us. So here's what we have. E to A uh, sus, we're gonna go like this with a metronome. I don't have one today, but just pretend. One, two, three, four, and. So you're not allowed to switch until the and of four. One, two, three, Four and okay, back to E. Three, four and. So you might still be going. There's still a gap, you know. There's going to be an eighth note of a gap, but that's when you get really microscopic. And if you could see inside my head, you would know I go crazy on these details, and I want to work them out so that it really helps my playing get smoother. And in turn, I can help you guys. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna actually turn it into a sixteenth note idea now. So we're gonna go like this now: one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. Uh. So now you're not allowed to change to the next chord until the uh of the four. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and 
a, e and a two, e and a three, e and a four, e and a. Now, of course, there's still a microscopic gap. Depending on the tempo of the song, you might not hear it, but I still want you to aim for perfect switchover. And you might not even like the sound of that. So this is just to perfect your chord changes so that you can loosen up in the future if you want to, but you always have that really high quality as well at your disposal. So now the final thing is to try not to change until the very second your pick's about to hit the strings and you switch. Now I realize this is really getting particular, but this is how you want to practice sometimes to really get sharp. Okay, so let's do the E. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. See, as the pick comes down, my fingers morph. Now. This is the hardest one. When you go to the B, you gotta really get that left hand or the fretting hand to follow suit. All right, so as the pick's coming down, the second before the pick hits the strings, you're morphing your fingers to switch. Practice doing this. Bring the pick up, come down, switch, lift it up as it's coming down. Now there might come a time where you have to do it on an upstroke, but only work on downstrokes today till you get it down. Otherwise you're gonna be thinking both ways, which is too much at first. All right, so you're gonna go from this sound. I'm exaggerating and of course, but that's how it sounds to me now when people do this to this. All right, get rid of that little extra gap in between and you'd be surprised how all your songs start to sound a little bit more cohesive and professional. So uh, use it when you want, don't use it if you don't want to, all right? If you're playing some song that requires a little sloppiness, like a lot of Beatles songs, there's a lot of open strings hit. John did that all the time. That kind of stuff. It's part of a sound, okay? But you don't want to do it without knowing you're doing it is basically what I'm trying to teach you. All right, work on that and see if it helps everything. And we'll catch you at the next lesson. I'm going to be putting one out tomorrow night. And uh, it's one a lot of people have been asking about, sending me personal uh, messages about. So we'll uh, talk about it tomorrow and we'll catch you then. Thanks, guys. Bye.